welcome to the third video of our statistics made easy series. Today we will talk about sampling methods and techniques. Before that, we must be aware of a couple of concepts. What is a sample? A sample is a part of a population which ideally should represent the population. If the sample does not represent the population, it is not considered as a good sample and all analysis becomes ineffective. Attributes of a population like mean, standard deviation, proportion, etc. are called population parameters and that of a sample are called sample statistics. We use different notations for different population and sample attributes which are shown in a tabular format here now. Let's have a look at the most commonly used sampling methods and techniques. Broadly, there are two methods. Probability sampling based on random selection where different units have equal chances of selection and non-probability sampling based on subjective judgment where different units do not have equal chances of selection. Probability sampling techniques could be simple random, stratified, cluster, systematic and multi-stage. Non-probability sampling are primarily of two types, volunteer and haphazard also called convenience sampling. Let's delve a little deeper into these techniques. Sample random. Sample selection here is entirely by chance and is good for homogeneous population. That is composed of parts or elements that are all of the same kind. Stratified sampling. Population is divided into strata here and analysis is done within the strata. It's good for heterogeneous population. Cluster sampling. Population here is divided into clusters and analysis is done on a population of clusters. Systematic sampling. This is a kind of sampling method where n number of samples are collected every th time interval. It's in a systematic manner. The last one is multi-state sampling. Here, simple random samples are collected in stages. It is important here to quickly differentiate the key factor in stratified and cluster sampling. In stratified, analysis is done within the strata, whereas in cluster sampling, analysis is done on a population of clusters. Let's do a self-assessment on probability sampling now. We will have a set of questions and we will try to answer them one at a time. So the first one, names of 20 employees being chosen out of a bag from a company of 200 employees. So we have a company of 200 employees and we randomly select 20 employees out of them. So it's simple random sampling. Next one, it talks about the GPA grade point average of students by major. So probably we have a good number of students who could be separated by their major subjects. That is, we can divide the students into strata basis their major subjects. So it's a kind of stratified sampling. Third example, or the third question, academic performance of high school students in the US. We are talking about academic performance of high school students in a country in the US, for example there would be millions of students divided into different cities, different states. So we can go ahead and get some clusters of students from different cities and study further. So this would come under cluster sampling. The next one, it talks about n calls every two hours in a contact center process. This one should be very easy. This is a systematic sampling. The last one, Census Bureau assessing health conditions in a country. When we talk about health conditions in a country, the sampling has to be exhaustive. The sampling could start at a country level, come down to state level, come down to city level, and then come down to a neighborhood level. It means that we are collecting the samples in different stages, and hence this would be a multi-state sampling example. Now, let's move on to non-probability sampling methods. These are primarily of two types, volunteer. 
Here each unit volunteers itself to be a part of the sample. For example, a game show or a news channel asking its viewers to participate in an online poll. Viewers voluntarily participate and thus become a part of the sample. The second one is haphazard sampling. Here sample units are chosen as per convenience in an attempt to recreate true randomness. However, it is not that effective and should be avoided. For example, selecting respondents without using any systematic or random selection. So this is all about probability and non-probability sampling techniques. You will come across many other sampling methods while you read different books on statistics. They would essentially align with one or more of the methods we have described here. However, if you have any kind of a question, please feel free to reach out to me with your queries. Finally, before concluding this video session, let me thank you for your time today to watch this video. I will be waiting for your feedback, your suggestions and if there is any request for on-demand videos, please go ahead and do the following. Either post your comments or connect with me on LinkedIn. Let me tell you a final thing here, a final note for today is that there is more to sampling. There are different ways we go ahead and calculate sample size and that's, a di that's, a diff that's an entirely different topic altogether. So we will discuss about sample size calculation in a separate video in details. Thank you once again. Have a blessed day.